it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Happy New Year! This is my first video of 2021 and I'm going to be talking about the books I read in December. I read six books and five of those were some of the last books on my If You've Got It, Read It challenge TBR. This was a reading challenge hosted by Spinebreakers and I know they're doing the challenge again this year so I will leave a link to that video so you can go check that out if you're interested. So the first book I finished was The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. This is a science fiction book. It originally came out in 1955 and it's set in a very strictly religious community and they believe very strongly that man is created in God's image, therefore two eyes, two arms, two legs, that kind of thing, and anyone that doesn't fit that form is deemed an abomination and is either destroyed or is outcast into this other society. The story follows a young boy and as the story goes on he finds out some things which basically go against everything he was brought up to believe. So it brings up a lot of really interesting themes about conformity and society. There's quite a lot going on in this story and I did think the ideas here were really really interesting and fascinating and I think they were presented in a really unique way and I did enjoy the story overall but I will say there were parts that I did find were a bit too drawn out and a bit dry but I am really glad I read this one. I've been meaning to read some John Wyndham for ages and this was a good one to start with and I would definitely like to read more by him. I rated this one three and a half stars. Okay, the rest of the books I'll be talking about are all horror and first up is Ghoul by Michael Slade. This came out in the late 80s and is part of Michael Slade's Special X series. I had read Headhunter previously and really enjoyed it. It's a really great horror slash crime thriller crossover and this one is somewhat similar in that mashup but I think this one is more on the horror side. And I read this as a buddy read with the lovely Regina at Regina's Haunted Library. We had a really good time reading it together and we both enjoyed it. I will leave a link to her review video for this so you can go check that out too. And yeah, this book, I don't know where to start really because there's so much going on here. But okay, so a few main elements are there is a rock group called Ghoul and there is also a Canadian Mountie and a case that he is looking into. There is a detective in London who again is dealing with a specific case. There is a wealthy socialite. There is a dowdy librarian. There is a killer on the loose and yeah, it's all going on. The story is quite all over the place. It flits around between a lot of different characters, lots of different locations and time periods, etc. And it really shouldn't work, but it does. I had such a good time reading this and it was just a lot of fun. And not only do we have sex and drugs and rock and roll, but we also have murder and gruesome and gory things going on. Yeah, it was a really good time. And it is pretty trashy in a sense, but it's also really well written and it's really well plotted. Like it's such a complex and multi-layered and very detailed story. You can really tell that the authors, because it's a group of people writing under a pen name, you can really tell that they have put a lot of time and effort into 
researching various elements of this book to make it come across as authentic. So the rock band ghoul were awesome, I loved all of the scenes where it focused on them and the various characters within it and there are a couple of shows that they play which were just, yeah, so much fun to read about and just that mid to late 80s era of rock and dark music. Yeah, it was just really fun to read. The killer was really fascinating as well and I won't say too much about that but yeah, that definitely develops into a lot more and is a very big part of the story. There is a detective in London who is on this case and she was a really great character. Basically she is, you know, a woman within the police force who has been able to rise up through the ranks yet she's still never really been fully accepted by her male peers and this case is make or break time for her. If she doesn't solve it then this is probably the end of her career and yeah a lot of her colleagues within the police force are probably going to be pretty happy with that. So I thought she was a really interesting character and maybe slightly underused, I kind of wish we'd had a bit more of her story but anyway if you've ever seen Prime Suspect, the British TV show with Helen Mirren, she reminded me a bit of her and yeah that's a great show if you've never seen it. And we also have a Canadian Mountie who is on another case and his name is Zinc Chandler and yeah he very much reads as a Zinc Chandler. Um, he was actually unfortunately one of my least favourite parts of the book. I mean he was fine but he was just that like guy's guy character that you see a lot of and really he's just kind of a dick. I just didn't really connect with him too strongly which is a shame because you know he is a big part of the story and if he had been slightly differently written maybe I would have been a bit more invested in his story. As I was reading this I was wondering how on earth all of these different storylines were going to come together and if it would be in a satisfying way but yes they do and yes it was. This gets wild towards the end, it is like balls to the wall craziness and it was just very entertaining. So yeah there's a lot of rock music elements in here, there are a lot of horror elements in here as well. I think this really is a great book for horror fans to read because not only are the references fun to read about but they are also relevant to the story and yeah just a couple of those things are Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft, specifically Lovecraft, they do feature somewhat in this story. I could definitely say a lot more about this one but I feel like I've already been talking about it for a while and yeah I rated it four stars, it was a blast to read and I definitely look forward to reading more in the Special X series. Next up, speaking of Lovecraft, I read Supernatural Horror in Literature by Howard Phillips Lovecraft. This is a very slim book, non-fiction, it's just over a hundred pages long and it was coincidence that I picked <laughs> these up back to back. Basically they were all on my, if you've got it, read it, TBR and yeah these were just unfortunately the ones that kind of got pushed to the end of the year and I'm like desperately trying to cram them all in but yeah this is one that honestly I only picked it up because it fit one of the prompts for that reading challenge I think it was you know to read the shortest book or one of the shortest books on your shelves and this definitely fit the bill I kind of put it off though because even though it's so short I just thought it was going to be really dry and boring maybe but I was so wrong. This is such a great book. It yeah basically is talking about supernatural horror in literature, it goes through different periods of literature and different areas of the world. It's just a really well put together piece of work and talks about so many 
novels and short stories in here. It got me so excited to read a lot of them. I was reading this on my bus commute to and from work so I didn't really have the opportunity to make notes but I definitely want to go back through this and make notes this time around because there are so many things in here that I want to track down and read and yeah Lovecraft's writing is I found very accessible. It did take me a minute to get into the writing style but after that it was fine and yeah he talks very highly about a bunch of authors and their work and then there are the ones where you can tell he doesn't like them as much and he's not afraid to be a bit sassy about it. It was very amusing and just really enjoyable to read. So yeah, not only is it very informative and has a lot of information crammed into this little book, but yeah, it was just an enjoyable read as well. I rated this one four stars and I highly recommend checking it out if you have any interest in the subject. Even if you don't like Lovecraft, I would still recommend it because, yeah, there's so much valuable information in here and I think you can pick it up for fairly cheap secondhand. Next up, I read The Stepford Wives by Ira Levin and we have this great author photo on the back. And yeah, I don't know if I need to say too much about this one because it is very famous and has become a term in everyday use even but it is about a family who move to a suburban neighborhood called Stepford and we're following the wife Joanna and she is trying to get to know some of her neighbors but she soon finds out that all the women want to do is stay home and clean and take care of their families and all of the men get to socialize together and yeah she soon suspects that something just isn't quite right here behind this perfect facade and this was such a great read this edition is less than 150 pages long so it's really not a time commitment and it's a really quick read i found it very absorbing and compelling i just needed to know what was going to happen even though i knew the rough storyline it was still so gripping to just see how it played out and yeah especially as it gets towards the end it was full of tension and anxiety and it actually got me really worked up i was so mad and frustrated at what was happening and i was also yeah just so anxious about what was going to happen in the end and yeah it's so well done it does tread some similar ground to Rosemary's Baby in kind of some of the plot points but it is within a different context so yeah personally I did prefer Rosemary's Baby a bit more that was a five star read for me and The Stepford Wives was a four star read but yeah that is still excellent and highly recommended I don't know why it's taken me so long to pick this one up but I'm really glad I finally did so next up I finally finished the Stand by Stephen King. This is a beast and here we have King looking moody on the back and I'm not going to hold this up for the whole time I'm talking about it because my arms aren't that strong. I had a very mixed experience with this book. I ended up rating it three stars. So The Stand is about a pandemic that hits and it's following the progression of that as people are dying and then following some specific survivors and their stories as they come together and yeah what happens after that. So I wouldn't have picked this book up during an actual pandemic I don't think. I put this on my TBR at the beginning of the year before I knew how this year was going to play out and the fact that it was the biggest book on my if you've got it read it TBR meant I just pushed it off every month I was like mm, maybe I'll get to it later and then as we got into November I realized it would be now or never I figured if I don't pick it up soon I will end up pushing it to the following year and then I'll just end up making up some excuse to not ever pick it up so I figured let's do it I've heard so many good things about it and I wanted to finally give it a try myself. 
And I did actually really enjoy it to begin with. It really gripped me from the beginning. I really liked the setup. I think after a certain point it starts to focus on some specific characters and follows them. It goes into a lot of detail about them. Too much, in my opinion. I think it one of the things I didn't like so much about it was the time it spent on certain characters. Obviously I want some time spent with them to get to know them and their background but just some of the detail he goes into was boring quite frankly and just unnecessary. I generally thought this book was way too long. The edition I read is 1153 pages long. It has absolutely no business being that long. I know some people love this book and I'm sure would argue that every single word here is necessary and important but yeah I would disagree. I think it is so overlong and it just goes off on so many unnecessary tangents. It ends up feeling very scattered and disjointed and yeah after a while I was really having to force myself to pick it up and keep reading it and once I had got you know to about the halfway point I was like well I can't back out now I'm committed to it I would regret not finishing it after having gotten that far and by the end I just honestly felt very underwhelmed you know I'm glad that lots of people seem to like it that's cool it just didn't really do too much for me there were definitely things that I did really really like about it and I think they were more like specific moments and specific scenes within the book so I don't want to go into too much detail and, and spoil things but yeah it definitely has its moments I'm not going to deny that but I think as a reading experience overall it was yeah way too long way too slow too all over the place I didn't like some of the storytelling I didn't like some of the directions the story took. Certain things with certain characters I won't go into details but yeah some of that didn't work for me and also the ending. So that's why I gave it a three star because it was a very mixed experience. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it either, it was just kind of in the middle somewhere. So at least I can say I've read it, right? And then just as a little fun extra to cram in at the end of the year I picked up a Point Tara book and I went with Double Date by Sinclair Smith because it's one of the wintry looking covers and yeah it's wintry at the moment. This one is about a teenage girl called Tracy and she and her boyfriend and this other guy and his girlfriend end up like it says going on a double date and this other guy Travis and his girlfriend are pranksters and they are just constantly pulling different pranks and jokes on them and Tracy's boyfriend Kyle ends up joining in with it all and thinks it's a right laugh and Tracy is just why is this even happening you're all incredibly obnoxious and of course they're just all mad that she can't take a joke and all of that so it was just really kind of annoying because most of the characters were super obnoxious and it just went on and on and on with more of the same thing. Anyway the four of them end up in this old abandoned ski lodge and the snow has been coming down and they end up getting snowed in and this is where the story does start to turn into something else so I won't say what it is exactly but it was kind of an interesting idea I guess but just didn't feel like very well developed. Um, it is a very short book and you know I know it's not really meant to be <laughs> dissected too much but it just wasn't the best. You know I didn't hate it but it just wasn't my favourite. I ended up rating this two stars and I just thought that was very fitting to end 2020 with a two star read. So that's that. So those were all of the books I read in December and I am yeah, looking forward to a fresh start 
with the new year and diving into a bunch of new books and yeah there was one book left on my if you've got it read it challenge tbr which i'm starting the year with that is charmed life by bernard taylor and i'm enjoying that so far and I don't know, would anyone be interested in seeing a specific wrap-up for the If You've Got It Read It challenge? If so, I would be happy to put that together. But either way, I still have a general 2020 wrap-up and review to do and also want to talk about my plans for 2021. So I hope to have that video up, yeah, maybe next weekend. And I also still need to do my top 10 horror books of 2020, so I think I've already got my list together, I just need to, yeah, get the books together and film it, but hopefully that will be coming soon, and yeah, I am, like a lot of people, hoping that 2021 will be better than 2020 in many ways, and I hope you all have a great one. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!